So thank you so much for coming. Yes, I am, I am live now. This is weird. Um, thank you for so much for coming to my talk about cold jQuery plugins and how to keep them warm and toasty using backbone views. Uh, I don't know if any of you have heard the, uh, the controversy about the other speaker slandering me on Twitter, but in case that, that's gotten out there in the past few hours, uh, I do not use two semicolons at the end of every line just to be really, really sure. Also, I do not mix tabs and spaces in every single file just for variety. I do that because I'm really worried about uh, Alzheimer's and I try to make things as complicated as possible just to make sure that I can think it all through and I never have to end up that way. I'll be proposing a talk to uh, jQuery Psychiatry to 2014. Uh, wait for the invite, I'm sure. So uh, w one last thing before I go on. So I, um, especially considering the end of the last talk, I'm not particularly up on the current memes. I, I know that there are cute cats out there, and I know that there are bunnies with pancakes on their heads, but that might be like 10 years ago, I don't know. But I, I don't wanna let my presentation go without having at least some cute animals, because I'm a big fan of cute animals. And it, and it happens to be that, that plugins kind of sound like penguins, and, and penguins are very, very cold animals, and I want to wrap them up in a coat and cuddle and like make sure that they're nice and warm. So you'll see a theme throughout, throughout this. So who am I? My name is John Paul. Uh, I live in New York. I work uh, for Condé Nast on the platform engineering team. I love JavaScript. Every once in a while, I have a indiscretion with Clojure or, or a dalliance with, um, with Scala, something like that. But I always come back to my tried and true programming language, JavaScript. I originally was Java and PHP for a while, and I, I went to JavaScript because I was finally able to build things that my friends and family were actually able to see and understand. Oh, that's what you do. You don't just sit there and like stare at a computer all day. You make things that, that look really nice and can, can work and function for people. You can find me online at Twitter on, at John K. Paul. I just tweeted my slides, so if you would like to get a copy of this and, and follow me along, please go ahead there. You can also find my contact information on my website, and my email address is right there. So I want to start off by talking to you about invention. Um, there, I went on an interview a few years ago where someone asked, asked me, John Paul, how do you go about invention? And this, was, uh, this was very confusing to me. I didn't really know what they were trying to get at. But after talking to them for a while, I came away with some very interesting facts and assessments about how developers do their, do their job. There are some people that like to start with the bare minimum. It's sort of no, not invented here, but they really want to write everything from the bare building blocks. They will sit there and write from, uh, from, the basic DOM, from the basic DOM manipulation stuff to the AJAX stuff. They will be very, very happy with, with creating their entire platform before they actually start building on top of that platform. Other people, on the other hand, enjoy taking bits and pieces that already exist, like we're all here for jQuery conference, like jQuery, like underscore, like backbone, like all these libraries bring them together and end up making something that's actually greater than the sum of its parts. And, and for me, I, I straddle this line every once in a while, but deadlines eventually make me take a side. Deadlines mean I have to use these, these disparate pieces and bring them together into my application that allow me to build the functionality and the features with the productivity that I need in order to come up with, with in order to finish by the deadline. So what does that mean usually for us developers using jQuery? Usually this means jQuery plugins. jQuery, jQuery plugins are the multi-tool of, of our industry. We can, there, are, there are jQuery plugins for everything on Earth. By the way, before I keep going, I, uh, I made this multi-tool slide before I saw Adam's talk in, in about two hours, so I'm claiming credit for that. So um, jQuery plugins, there, there are date pickers, there are modals, there are gallery plugins, autocompletes, bar charts, maps, and so much more. This is the, the exact definition of the jQuery motto. This is writing less and doing more. This is being able to take disparate pieces that someone else has built for you, open sourced graciously, fix, fixes lots of bugs and makes sure is, is working for your consumers or your product or whatever. And, and you can take these and be very, very productive with them. So this sounds like the greatest thing in the world. We, we take these things, we, build, we use what other people have built to make our lives easier and faster. But there, there is there's a little bit of a downside to this. When you actually start using plugins, it's not just taking these things that, that look similar and integrating them into your existing application. But usually when you go to a plugin site, all, all you see is, is big sets of documentation and very, very large pieces of, uh, of configuration. Every plugin out there has 
um, jQuery.fn.something, when you actually call that method, you pass in an object with lots and lots of properties. Very, sometimes it'll, sometimes the, the page of documentation will go down 10 pages just explaining all the different possible options that are out there. So when we, uh, when we actually try to integrate these into our application, sometimes it doesn't fit. It, it's really nice that jQuery provides this extreme flexibility because this means that all the developers out there that are open sourcing their plugins can build things that fit their particular need. You can fit what, what they need at the moment that they're building this, and then they can give away that for free. On the, on the jQuery boilerplate site, there are over 10 different kinds of plugin patterns that are out there. there there's actually much more if you, go into, if you go into them. These just happen to be the documented different patterns. All of these patterns are very disparate. They don't actually fit any particular scheme jQuery UI has the widget factory. The widget factory does have a consistent interface that you can use. But most plugins out there are not jQuery UI plugins, although some of the examples I showed earlier are. But there, there's a very, it's pretty difficult to be able to integrate in a consistent fashion all of these jQuery plugins to your own site. What this actually means is when we end up, when we use jQuery plugins on their own, is that we end up with spaghetti. This is the spaghetti we've all been running from when we start, when we, after we start learning jQuery a little bit better. We, we start off with our one gigantic scripts.js file that happens to select a lot of elements and do something with them. But in the end, we want to try to bring some order and organization to this. This is what I would like to show, is, is basically a penguin with, with no coat. It's very, very cold out there in the ice in the winter, and there's, there's nothing covering this up and, and, and giving you a consistent interface to, to use these jQuery plugins. So what can we use to help with this? I'd like to bring up Backbone. So Backbone. So how many out there have used Backbone, if I can actually see some hands? Cool, OK, that's a fair amount of you. So Backbone is a fairly small uh, structure. It's a utility library that has a few main pieces. It has models, collections, routes, and views. Views are most important for my particular talk, because I'm talking about jQuery plugins, which have a lot to do with the DOM. So I'll be going into a little more detail about Backbone views. But Backbone, in general, has, a lot, has utilities that allow you to create uh, models and views in the browser that allow you to write a little bit more organized code, structured code that is more easy to maintain in the long run. So as an example, uh, I just took a picture of the Yahoo homepage. Uh, the Yahoo homepage has lots of different sections to it that you would potentially call widgets. These widgets, for example, on the left side, there is the navigation rail. Then on the bottom right, there is the, uh, the, the weather section. And then in the center, there is a carousel. And that carousel has lots of different functionality. You can, you can go through different news stories. Sometimes there's a slideshow there and things like that. Each of these in the, in the spaghetti world of jQuery before some sort of architecture on top of it would be, I have a single page. I have a single scripts.js file that, that could grow to 1,000, 2,000 lines, and all I do is select some elements and add some events to them. And in this particular case, if I wanted to, for the carousel in the center, I would select the element for the right arrow. I would add an event handler on click that said when the right arrow is clicked, do all of these things that somehow move the images to the left or to the right, ho however that actually works out. What Backbone gives us is an easier way to express, here I have some code, and that code is related to particular pieces in the DOM. And that basically I'm building a widget, and that widget goes in a particular piece of a Backbone view code. So you know that when you look at this code, it maps to a particular piece of your page, rather than having to scroll through a very long file to look for potentially some CSS selectors that happen to match what you know is on a page. You can go and see, I have a named view. For example, I'll show you here. This, uh, this view is called center photo carousel view. That's the name of a variable in my, in my source. I could have this in a separate file, so it would be named something appropriately. So I know that when I want to change the code, when I want to look at the code related to a particular piece of my page, a particular <coughs> widget on my page, I can go to an exact place to look for that. So, Backbone views have a few basic fundamental building blocks functionality that it gives you. Uh, I, I'm describing a few here. There are, there are many more pieces. Backbone is a fairly Backbone has a lot of features that I'm not going to be discussing. But in this particular case, you can see the two things that I'm, I'm bringing up are one, it has the concept of initialization. Backbone views have an, 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 an initialization step that allows you to run some code. Before, while you're actually setting up that particular widget. In this case, I'm just saying for that, that photo carousel view that I showed you on Yahoo, if, if this happened to be their implementation, 
Uh, they could select some the, to select the current element, which in Backbone is is alias to this dot dollar el. That's just a utility that Backbone gives you, a, a shortcut method that Backbone gives you. We could find all of the li elements and count that up, and we could store that as the photo count and potentially do something with them. Additionally, Backbone gives you a very nice declarative way to define your events. You're, normally, you would have to select some elements and then add some click handler. Whereas, in this case, on lines four and five of this backbone view, you can see how we can map an event in the DOM, which is clicking the element that has the class name left arrow, to something that actually has semantic value in our application. We don't have to call something handle click or something like that. We can actually specify move carousel left, because in our code, that's what we care about. Our application actually cares about, we're moving the carousel to the left or the right, not that we happen to be clicking some particular element. So what this gives us is all about organization. Backbone View's main focus is organization, organization, organization. This is where we're, we're running away from all the spaghetti that we had before, and we're ending up with something that, that is more modular and where you can actually know where you should be looking in your code at any particular time. So if you wanted to use Backbone with a plugin, the, the first thought about what to go, how to go about doing this, is using the code that I showed before, is to, uh, in this case, I'm using jcarousel. jcarousel is a, is a very popular plugin for making carousels in, in jQuery, using jQuery. Um, in this case, I'm moving all of that old configuration code that I had in the previous example, I'm just moving that directly into my initialize. In, in, in the initialize function, which is the, basically the constructor, when I, happen, when I instantiate this backbone view, this code runs. Um, when I do initialize that, I set up everything like I would before in the old world. And then on, on line 20, I actually instantiate that view, bind it to the element. In this case, it is the center carousel element on my page. This is how I specify in backbone world what element this widget needs to be bound to. So maybe my server side generates all of the HTML and puts it into an element called center carousel with that class name center dash carousel. And then my backbone view picks it up and does all of these fancy things with it, adds, adds jQuery plugins, adds its event handlers, and does everything else. But what, what this is actually doing is just moving what we had before somewhere else. We're moving all of the, the configuration that we had in our big scripts JS file into a backbone view, which is, it is nicer, it, it's better, but we're still having spaghetti here. It's still not really what we, we're, we're, we're tightly bound, binding the center carousel, center photo carousel view to J carousel and, and all of the plugin initialization code. So this is, I know the penguin thing, it's back again. This is a penguin with a scarf, basically. It's still pretty cold. It, it, doesn't, have, it doesn't have the warm coat around it, but it's getting there. It, uh, it has a little bit of a better interface than it did before. So, What's wrong with this? This leads to tons of duplication. If, if I want to have another carousel view that's maybe not in the center, but happens to be in a different section of a different page, and I'm building up my backbone application, wh what I need to do when I actually get to the stage of writing a new one is I need to copy that configuration again, and then again and again. I need to make these, move these configurations everywhere where I happen to be using a carousel. So how do we fix this? We, I would like to show you how to separate the details from specific views that use those details. So how we remove that duplication is by um, <clears throat> making a view that is not particularly bound to any particular section of any page, but a view that just generically holds all of the configuration and information about how to set up J carousel. What this is showing you in the first 10 lines or so is I'm making a carousel view. This is a generic view that only deals with how to set up the carousel jQuery plugin, and all of that information is stuck in there. Here I'm setting up using jcarousel next, jcarousel pre. These are the configuration options that are specific to jcarousel that specify what is the name of the class for buttons that will move the, move the carousel to the left or the right. Additionally, I have an autoplay true, which happens to be just another configuration option of jcarousel. And then all of the other spaghetti that, that is configuration needs to go in that, that view. But now if you see on lines 14 and below, um, the, the actual usage of this becomes very clean. All, when I need to make new carousels that have different data behind it, maybe different pieces, different widgets on any particular page, I can just look at, I, I can just use this once. I don't have to reset up a J carousel every time. All of that code is, com is, is secluded in the area for carousel view.
So now we're getting closer. We are taking strides toward the best place where we can be. Our penguin now has a hat and a vest. Uh, this happens to be the one that I couldn't find a real penguin for, but it's, it's plush, but it still makes sense. So how do we go from here? What's, what's still wrong? Now we are, we're, I have an example of something where we've moved all of our jcarousel plugin initialization code into backbone world, but there's still a lot of rigidity. Now we are tied very, very directly to jcarousel. Everywhere that I need to use the code, everywhere that I need to use this carousel view that's intended to be generic, that's supposed to be used in multiple different places in my application, I need to understand something about jcarousel because the name of this particular um, plugin configuration option is jcarousel next and jcarousel prev. So how we can go from here is to look to design patterns. So design patterns are a really big general subject. There are books out there, and uh, you could read about every design pattern before ever actually using one. Uh, I'm kind of of the opinion that until you have a real world use case, it's very hard to get into your head why, why this particular metaphor that is a design pattern matters. I've, I've read the books, you know about their strategy command. There are people that can just list all of the names, but th I hope that this is a, a real example of why one of these is are useful in your own code. So, this is, a car, this is what's underneath a car. We could actually, if we tried, with all of our friends and family around this particular chassis, we could try to set, uh, start some spark plugs at the right time or turn uh, the angles of the wheels at the right time to actually make this run. But this kind of complexity all, all below underneath the hood is not what we actually want to look at when we're utilizing code, when we're using nice APIs and nice abstractions on top of that. What we actually want to look, look at is something that hides all of this complexity. We want to look at a dashboard. A dashboard has a really straightforward interface. We have a steering wheel. We have a brake pedal. We have an accelerator pedal. We have a gear shift. That's pretty much all you need to know. While that actually hooks into the craziness that is underneath the car, the person using the car doesn't have to understand any of those complicated things. So what this is is the facade pattern. The facade pattern is a, is a design pattern, just like all the other ones. We happen to use this particular one all the time, especially with the jQuery. Almost everything we use in jQuery is a facade over some complicated thing that is difficult, in, in order, is difficult to achieve across browsers. Uh, the first example here is document ready. Document ready in the jQuery 1, 1, 10, 1 branch is actually really complicated because uh, old IEs have to do some crazy things in order to figure out that the DOM is actually loaded. It's not just a simple event that fires somewhere, but rather there's code in there that will continuously try to scroll the page until it does not throw an error. It's actually one of the really, if you, if you grep through the code for, for Diego, someone named Diego Perini figured this out, that if you, if you can't figure out how DOM ready happens any other way, you can just keep scrolling the page until it stops throwing an error, and then suddenly you know you're in DOM ready. This is really complicated and insane hack to make it work, but you don't have to worry about that as jQuery developers. As jQuery developers, we just use jQuery. It, hides all of that complexity, and we get something nice and simple, which is document ready. Similarly for Ajax. Ajax in, in old IEs have a completely different interface. In order to create an, XH, in order to create an XML HTTP, HTTP request object, you can't just call a new XML HTTP request. Rather, you have to go through ActiveX, and it has a slightly different interface. jQuery takes care of all of that. Similarly, the, uh, the, input, the val function on, on all inputs, it works seamlessly on inputs and text areas, which both have value fields, but it also works on select boxes, which have uh, selected indexes and options with values underneath it. But you don't have to care about that when you're writing jQuery code. You just think about, I want the value of the select box, or I want the value of this input box, and it all just works. Uh, again, with, with uh, setting up on click in, in older browsers in the jQuery 1 branch, it has, to do, it has to understand that some browsers have uh, the W3C model of adding event listeners, and some do not. So, what I want to show is how we can go about writing our code in a different way that will facade over all of the complexities that I was talking about earlier uh, the, uh, around the jcarousel plugin. So in order to build a facade successfully, we need to first think about what are the important pieces that we actually care about in the plugin that we're using. The plugin has, let's say, 100 options, but really, when I'm developing with it, or my particular team, only care about using two to five of those things. So in this, in this case, I've, I've gone through my thinking process and found that these are the few things I actually care about. I care about the next element, 
the, the element to specify how to go to the next part of the carousel, similarly for the previous part of the carousel, and maybe the option to auto start. All the other things, potentially, like uh, ma making, making it a vertical carousel or, carousel or a horizontal carousel, and all the other potential options, I don't care about. My application doesn't need to bear the brunt, the overhead, of understanding all of that complicated code. <clears throat> so in this example, I show a backbone view that is refactored a little bit from what I showed before. It has a, it has a very similar pattern to it. I have a, a, a single view that I create to encapsulate all carousels. Those carousels, I then create those individual views underneath um, that, that, that contain the information for a particular widget on the page. But here, you will see that I'm actually mapping the names of the configuration options that I want to have my consumers use. I want to say that people who use Carousel View at my company on my team need to care about these particular options. And I can even change their names that's the, in a way that would fit how my application should work. And in my initialize function, I go through, set up some defaults using underscore defaults. And then I, I map those directly to jcarousel. So what I call the next button selector, which is a name that is more generic, not tied to jcarousel in particular, I map that to jcarousel's names in, in specifically. So now the, the code that actually uses my facade doesn't have to understand that jcarousel even exists. All it knows is I have some way of communicating with, this, with the view that I'm creating, and that can create a carousel for me. It might create a carousel using a jQuery plugin. It might use jCarousel. It might use a completely different type of carousel plugin, or it might not use a jQuery plugin at all. And it might just build all of this itself. But the consuming code does not have to care. It does not have to know. This, this allows a lot of flexibility, because now we can change all of the code behind it. And the consumers of this particular backbone view don't have to care. So this is, like the, this is the most reuse we can possibly get. Now we are at a stage where we can put views and widgets, any widgets whenever, wherever we want, and we can make changes behind the scenes and nothing actually matters. We can create multiple views that use those widgets, put them all over our pages, and it, and it, doesn't, and it doesn't matter. So we are now writing code that is extremely not sensitive to change. That's a big goal of mine in the code that I write. I want to not only hide all of the complexity behind this facade, but also make sure that I reduce sensitivity to change across my entire code base. I can then, for example, if I have one jQuery plugin, jCarousel does not actually have uh, the feature to, auto, to go circularly throughout the entire list of elements. That's something that I originally wanted. I can go and find some other plugin, put it there in its place, and, and only one very small section of my code actually needs to change. This is, this is the best thing we could possibly get to. The next thing I want to talk about is so this is, uh, I actually do have a cat meme here, which I'm excited about that I was able to find on YouTube. There's something called the law of Demeter. The law of Demeter basically is similar, to, is the same as the principle of least knowledge. We want our code, ideally, as a best software engineering principle, we want our code to, to know as little as possible about the code that it depends on. We don't want it to understand how that works because then, Again, we would have, we are, we are tightly coupling multiple pieces. We want our code to be like this cat. It doesn't know anything except the inside of the tissue box and potentially the advertisement that YouTube happens to serve. So uh, this, is, this is a goal for my code. And I think it should be the goal for all of our code. And backbone views, when, when used successfully in wrapping jQuery plugins, allow us to achieve this kind of separation because we are making sure that the code that only knows what it needs to know about. So I think we've gotten to my goal. My goal is to give the, the penguin as much of a coat as possible. It understands that, that it is now warm. It, it can, uh, this particular jQuery plugin as a penguin understands it's warm and can, can live its life completely separately and happily. Um, <clears throat> so what I want you to take away from this is that jQuery plugins are very useful. You can't really live life without them. They are necessities to our work, and we should be very happy to integrate them into our websites. But using them on their own is not the only option. They're the, while they're all, the, all the tutorials out there are basically taking jQuery plugins, copying and pasting those script tags and files into your application, there are other ways to go about that integration that allow you to 
to have a lot more flexibility than you do when you typically integrate a jQuery plugin into your application. The next thing is that you need to find out which pieces of that jQuery plugin you actually care about. Because what you need to customize is, is usually a significantly smaller subset of the entire jQuery plugin's um, interface than you actually need. This is, this, is another, this is really important because then we can, we can change what we need to change whenever we need to change it. So I have a list of resources here. If you, can, if you want to click on these, they give you some more information about, um, about software engineering best practices and design patterns when it comes to backbone applications. And the jQuery plugin pattern list that I brought up earlier, there are so many of them, they're very useful to know. Uh, and there's also some links here about backbone architecture. There's also a talk coming up a little later uh, by Eric Shepard about, wrapping, or about writing jQuery plugins and, and having nice interfaces for what your application actually needs. Uh, so definitely check that out. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. Please let me know if you have any questions. So the question, well, correct me if I'm wrong. The question was if uh, the HTML was part of the backbone view or yeah, the, the actual markup, like all the divs or like the list or whatever the, the HTML is for that, that carousel widget. So that HTML in these particular examples was generated elsewhere. And I was using backbone to, to add to that, to decorate the HTML that was, for example, server side generated. So, that this, the HTML is generated somewhere else that has, for example, the list of photographs that should be in this carousel or something like that. And we, I was using Backbone to wrap a jQuery plugin that would enhance that HTML generated somewhere else with the ability to become a carousel. Okay. OK, so the idea there is that, so I'll give you the explicit case that I was talking about here. I built, was building an application, the reason that I thought of this in the first place. I was building an application where uh, we had lots of carousels, basically. This was not, not a server-side generated application. It was a client-side full MVC, um, or MV whatever. So I, we built up many, many backbone views that happened to use jQuery plugins underneath, all using jCarousel Lite. JCarousel Lite is a, is a different plugin that has significantly fewer features. And we thought that was great because we didn't need all of those features, so it was fine. Then we, uh, the requirement came that we needed to have all, many, many more features that JCarousel Lite did not provide. We then had to go through all of the work of finding all of the places where we use jQuery plugins, change all of those manually to JCarousel Lite, sorry, to JCarousel Full, and then change all of the configuration options as needed in order to support that change. Whereas, so once we actually did that, we realized this is not the way to go, made a new abstracted version of the carousel view that contained all of this logic for us. So now we didn't have to make that, subsequently, we don't have to make changes to carousels in multiple different places, but we can keep it in, in one particular place. Yes. That's true about any abstraction. So, um, is there a microphone somewhere? Yeah, I know, I'm trying to, I was just mad. So the question was, uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I apologize. Yes. I mean, as you had more and more layers to simplify something, right? That works fine until there's a problem. Because then if you have, ever have to troubleshoot, you now have all these layers that you add on. Okay, so the, the question is basically, if you add these layers of the abstraction, how eventually, that, that, that makes some nice abstractions in the first place. But when you actually need to have problems, when you need to debug and troubleshoot, that means that there are more layers to look through. Is that getting this right? OK. So that's true about any abstraction you use in general. Any time that you write code that is a utility that will help you with something later, you're always adding layers in between. Similarly, you can say the same with jQuery's entire API. So sometimes if there is a bug somewhere with the DOM, you, and you're using the minified version of jQuery, once in a while it might be useful to go into it. And that's complicated because jQuery does things that are complicated and it abstracts over problems that I definitely don't understand. But the, the value 
the value is something that there's a trade-off that you need to make as a developer when you're actually implementing these things. We could write every application we have ever built as one gigantic JavaScript file with no functions and no abstractions whatsoever. We, we separate these things out because, one, they're more maintainable that way because we can easily find errors or we can easily find where we should be making changes and where code could be affecting our application. And two, because we want to we want to be able to reuse what we can. Where at least me, I'm I'm lazy, right? If I can if I can write something once and reuse it in multiple different situations, that's one of my goals. So you're right, definitely. When whenever you create any abstraction, there are more layers to look through. But that that trade-off is something that that you make as you're sitting at the computer every day typing, in my opinion. Yes. Just a follow-up comment to that. You can always take abstractions too far. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, you know, that is taking it a little too far because then you're coming up with a least common denominator interface. Yes. And then you cannot, you cannot quite easily switch to Amber and use all of its functionality, for example. I agree. That is, that is a situation that at your, there, when you're there at your computer and you make that decision, you will have to make those, those, the same logical connection. Because you're right. You, if you want to abstract away backbone, that's the whole point that's, that it's giving you. Similarly, as I said earlier, you could abstract away jQuery if you really wanted. I mean, or rather, you could not use jQuery's abstractions. And you could do all of it manually. But this is what we don't want to do. Because we don't want to have to write code that is that complicated, basically. And maintain code that is that complicated. I agree. Any other questions? I don't think so. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.